Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is, wherever and whenever you are. I hope you're having a good one, and um, I hope that I can contribute and make whatever time of day you're having a little bit better. My name is Callisto. You are listening to Jupiter 4 Radio on SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, or uh, maybe something else. And um, I've got an EP out. It's called uh, Hardly Intact. That's it. And um, yeah, I'm going to be going over it today and reviewing it and maybe talking about a few things that you didn't know that might be interesting. I don't know. Let's get right into it. So the first song of the EP is this one, um, It Fell Through Storm Clouds. The next one is There Is No Error, then there's Lights in the Dark, uh, Lights From the Dark, and Midnight Doesn't Fall in Space. So interesting fact, these aren't the original names of the songs, um, most of them at least. Um, and the reason for that is because I wrote all these songs and they were um, they are kind of going to be individual singles and individual songs and uh and then i was like oh these are all pretty similar i might as well just put them put them together into an ep and um i made that cover art with the with the spaceship and there's no real story to that cover art really uh it's just something i put together and i kind of had in my mind for this idea of hardly intact because like you know the spaceship's hardly intact um and then I kind of named everything else with kind of the spacey theme. So like it fell through storm clouds, like, you know, the, the spaceship. And then there is no air because there's things wrong with it. I don't know. I just kind of tried to make it all um, sort of kind of spacey themed. Uh, Midnight Doesn't Fall in Space. That kept a little bit of the original name, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, so the cover art, I made all of that in... Um, GIMP, which is like kind of a free Photoshop kind of thing. It, it, it's it's much like Photoshop. It does all the basic stuff that you would need in a photo e editing software. And um, the background was a picture of Earth. I didn't make that one. And uh, the spaceship I also didn't draw, but I did kind of take it from uh, something else. I was, I was trying to find a spaceship that kind of looked like the one that I had in my mind, and that was the closest one that I could find. And it was a picture from a video game that isn't really very popular at all. Um, so I took that and I, I cut it out. And the two um, the two bits at the front that are uh, like sparking and stuff, those were uh, cannons firing. On the original ship, everything was, you know, put together. I, I, I stole the ship and I broke it, basically. Um, and those two bits were... It, so it was a picture of the ship. It was, it was flying through clouds and it was firing the, uh, the cannons. It was firing, like, some laser cannons. And so the uh, the glow from the cannons is what you see there. And so I, I kind of cut out the laser beams cutting out. There are uh, uh, the laser beams coming out. And I, I couldn't get rid of the glow or anything, so I just used that to my advantage and um, put some sparks on there. Uh, what else? There, so there's four songs on this EP, and Lights from the Dark specifically was not actually going to be there. That was going to be a single that I was going to release somewhere else. Uh, the original name of that one is, um, what did I call it? It was called What Lights Are For? which was just like the name that I gave it when I put together an idea. I, just, I, I, I wrote down a melody that I had in my head, and then I put like a bass line and, and some drums over it. And, um, and then I closed out the project. And then, you know, when you make a new project, you got to name it. So I called it What Lights Are For. And I kind of kept the light idea, and I turned it into Lights From The Dark because space. But originally what the third song was going to be was um, a song that was originally called Foxy because um, it was, uh, what was it? Wait, all right, so this had three names. So I put together the idea, it was called Foxy, because the idea was something that I saw on Fox Stevenson's Instagram. 
um, the the main melody. So I I, I just kind of took my idea of that melody and turned it into a song, and I called it Foxy. Uh, but that wasn't going to be the actual name of the song. And um, then I changed the name to uh, The Wolf, because I, I still kind of liked this, this fox wolf idea. And when it was going to be on the EP, it was going to be called A Gravel Atmosphere, which is this idea I've always had of a planet, which atmos which the atmosphere is literally made of gravel and, and pebbles. And just think of like, you know, how that planet would be like. Then think about crashing a spaceship into it. I don't know. But yeah, it was going to be called A Gravel Atmosphere. I decided to take it off the EP and I decided not to release it um, as a single or anything like that because it's just... It's not really there. I'm so happy and so proud of all the other songs. And this one was just such a B-side. But I'm going to play it right now. Uh, it's sort of kind of a dubstep sort of thing in a way. I, I guess you could call it dubstep. I don't know. The genre doesn't matter. But either way, this is The Wolf or Gravel Atmosphere, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let me turn the volume up. And there we go. Enjoy. So, yeah, that that song to me just kind of feels really young. There's nothing really exceptional about it. Uh, all the other songs on the EP, I'm super happy with, and you know, th there's just something about them that just makes me excited when I listen to it. I'm like, holy cow, I wrote that. But this one's just like it, it feels young, and it's like, yeah, I can I can make music. I can I can write a dubstep song if you want me to. But um, I don't know. I might just kind of post this on the SoundCloud as you know unreleased deleted from hardly intact and like if you like it and you want to use it on a video or something that you're working on or any sort of project then feel free to rip it i don't i don't care i might even set it for, so that you can download it on soundcloud but um yeah that was going to be on the ep and now it's not um all right let's get into the first track of the ep now uh what is it called fell for fell through storm clouds right um, this one didn't really have that much of an original name. Uh, the original project name was Lewis Cole, drum and bass. And the reason for that is because I didn't write these drums. Uh, this was sampled from a guy called Lewis Cole. If you, uh, you can find the original video. If you look up on YouTube, Lewis Cole 
drum and bass, you'll find it. Um, spelled Lewis, L-O-U-I-S, Cole, C-O-L-E. Um, and I liked it because it's like, it's really kind of lo-fi, lo-fi, um, as in the recording quality isn't all that great. It's a very reverberant room. It's not a, uh, it's not a well mic'd up drum set. But uh, let me just play the drums raw real quick. Uh, this is Lewis Cole with drum and bass. It sounds really aggressive. It's like, you know, in your face. And um, there were several different beats that he wrote with that. You know, let me pull up the original video on YouTube real quick. Um, it wasn't just one beat. It was several different ideas that were kind of at a, um, a fast pace like that. And I really, really liked it because it's, it, they weren't really traditional drum and bass rhythms. It wasn't just like, that's like every single drum and bass song. It was a, it was a little more interesting stuff. Here's a video. Check it out real quick. Um, I think I used it. Yeah. I used the first B that he plays right here. This is it. Yeah. And then he goes on, he does this thing. I use this one in the song as well. It was like a slower one. I don't know. I just really enjoy this. I might even sample some of the other ones later in a different song. But yeah, the, uh, that's this right here. And then I use the second beat over here. So yeah, um, Lewis Cole drum and bass. Uh, that was the original idea for this song. And uh, this part right here that I just played, this is at, what's the timestamp on this? Like 117 in the song. Um, where everything kind of cuts out. Let me just turn this down and play it in the background. Yeah, so like right here, it's playing out, it sounds cool, and then everything cuts out for a sec, and it's just the drums. And, it, and it's a different beat, but it's the same drums. And then I start bringing in, bringing in this other melody with the same instrumentations for a different melody. The reason that that is is because I was playing with this original beat uh, that you hear at the beginning. And then I wanted to bring in another one, and I want to have like a change of mood. So, uh, you know, I, I I had all of that building up to it, and then all of the instrumentation dropped because I didn't write anything for it yet. And it was just this new this new beat, this that right there. And um, I liked it so much. I was like, wow, it, this is really cool because it was like kind of a break from the action while things change. And I kind of liked that rather than just throwing in a new beat and a new melody really quickly. So I did that. <clears throat> um. All right, so if you're a musician and you write a song, a song sounds great, but you got to mix it. Mixing it is like playing with the uh, the frequencies, turning up certain frequencies, turning down other ones, running it through compression, and you know j just adjusting everything so it sounds really good. And for that, you need um, something that plays the sound exactly how it is, which are studio monitors. Or uh, there's also monitor headphones, but monitors differ from consumer speakers because a lot of consumer speakers and even uh, consumer amplifiers kind of add a little bit of compression or EQ or something like that. They might, you know, turn up the bass a bit because, you know, just people like that. But you can't mix with that because you want to hear it exactly how it is. And so I've got these two uh, Rokit, Rokit 6 speakers from uh, Kirk Systems. And I love them. They're great. They're big, stupid speakers. Um, and you kind of have to have them pointing at your ears because the sound is so directional. And it's really weird. While I'm mixing this song, and while I'm mixing several others, even past songs that I've wrote, and uh, you know, ones that I've released, ones that I haven't, for some reason it sounds so much better when I stand up. Like I'll be sitting at my desk, I'll be mixing, and then I, I leave the song playing and I stand up to go get a snack or something. And I'm like, holy crap, it sounds amazing now. And I sit back down and I'm trying to figure out what it is. I still, I still don't know, but this song sounded better when I stood up. Um, I don't know why. If you're into sound and engineering and uh, uh you know audio engineering and things like that and you might have an answer let me know because i would love to make my songs sound like they do when i get up from my desk to get a drink of water 
Um, okay, so this other interesting thing is this bit at the um, at the end. Uh, just listen to this for a second. I suppose that's not really the end. It's more like the middle. But this uh, this sound effect right here, uh, this one, is very interesting. Maybe you recognize it. Um, if you play a lot of video games, you probably do. This is the zombie scream from Call of Duty. Um, and there's a little bit of a story behind this. I was writing this song and I was like, oh, I really want just some kind of sound effect or something, you know, some sample to go on beat two over here or, uh, um, you know, measure, measure two, whatever. Um, and I couldn't think of what I wanted to do. So I started, I started, you know, scanning around YouTube, you know, all my liked videos or, you know, something, it just or some random sound. I needed some random sound. And, um, I was remembering this house song that I used to listen to a really long time ago, and I can't find it anywhere. I can't find it anywhere. I've looked for hours for this song. Um, it might have been a remix or something, but the the video where I originally listened to was a mix, and it got taken down for copyright. But it was like, slam, do 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 and I really like that, that slam sound, and I wish that I could just find the guy saying that, because even if I didn't find the sound, I would still want to use that. And um, I remembered that, uh, the, this this sound of like the zombie going like Sam! hold up Sam! I just remembered that um, it, that wasn't from the song but it was it was something else that I remember I was like oh what is that from oh it's from freaking uh, Call of Duty so I looked up on YouTube Call of Duty zombie sound effects and I found like a three minute video of just every sound of the zombies screaming one after another it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard and I, I downloaded it and I took just that one Sam! sound and um put some reverb on it this is what it is originally um i used that for the song and it sounded good so i just kept it and it was so funny though because as i was downloading this like this whole entire time as i was i was uh going through trying to find the sound i was totally self-aware of exactly what i was doing almost and the whole time i was like this is the most ridiculous thing i've ever done so i downloaded the file and i had to name it I was like, well, what do I name this? And I was like, this is literally just freaking zombie screams. And I was like, all right, there's the name. So I, 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 th there's a file on my computer now. It's like three minutes and it's called, quote, literally just freaking zombie screams because this is so ridiculous what I did. But I mean, it sounds all right. It sounds all right. <laughs> I really like this bit coming up right here. I've really been trying to figure out exactly what it is about that that sounds so good. It's just exactly when that Matrix lead comes in. This bit right here. I love that. Um, I think it's a mix of the snare coming down as well as this um, this lead pad sound. This one right here. Um, yeah, so by the way, uh, back on the drums real quick, I cut out with, uh, in the mix, I cut out the, the kick drum, the, the Lewis Cole kick drum, and, uh, I replaced it with my own. So that's why mine sounds a little bit different. Uh, let me just play this real quick. Not that. So that's my kick drum based with the uh, mixed with the reverb of the actual kick drum. And that as well as the snares that I put over here. Uh, this, is, this is the whole snare track as well. So I, I kind of put my own drums over this as well, but I mix it so it sounds nice. That mixed with the, uh, the lead sound. Uh, I call it the Matrix lead because the sound is called Matrix Would Be Proud. Yeah, the, the the massive preset that I used is called the Matrix Would Be Proud, so I call it the Matrix lead. But yeah, it's just this entrance right here. I love it so much. Sam. Sam. 
All right, so let's move on. Uh, side note, while I'm loading up the next song, I used the exact same snare in every single one of these songs on the EP. And I really wish that I had a different punchy snare that I could use, but I'm kind of stuck using the Cymatics default one because uh, I don't know what else to use and I can't find any others. But I think after the CP is out, it's not out uh, at the time of me recording this, by the way. Uh, it's almost done being mixed. You know, it, it, it's done enough that I could record this podcast, but uh, it's not totally done yet. Um, so after it's out, and as I'm writing the next the next big project, I think I'm definitely going to go around on like Isotope or something online to find some better snares that I could use. Um, all right, so this next song is called "There Is No Error," and it's written with all sorts of numbers and capitalized and lowercase letters and stuff like that it, it's supposed to be a pun on like there is no error but you can see clearly just from reading it that there is all right so this song was very interesting the way that it was written i wrote this in colorado uh if you don't know i'm from connecticut and i was on vacation in colorado with my father we were out skiing and stuff like that and it was like 4 a.m and i was uh, i was up and i couldn't fall asleep again i wasn't tired at all um so I got up and I was just listening to Dead Mouse for like half an hour. And I was like, all right, I really kind of want to write something. My dad was still sleeping. So I go over into the into the living room of the um, little hotel thing that we had. And um, I was looking out at the mountains and like the sun rising over the mountains. And uh, I took a time lapse of the whole thing. It was really cool. But while, it, while the time lapse was going, I was just sitting here writing this song. The original name of this song is Rat Traps, perhaps, which I actually really like that name. And it kind of sucks that it didn't match with the theme because I totally wanted to keep that rat traps perhaps um, it's aggressive it's very synthy and um, this was based on a dead mouse song that I was listening to I think um, yeah so this little dude part this is this is really funny I I wanted this in here I don't remember why I wanted it there but uh, that is me standing on the uh, so I just use the default microphone on my computer. I didn't use anything fancy. I'd set it to record. I got up. I walked to the other side of my room and I just yelled, dude. And I, I used that, mixed it with a little bassy thud noise. And that's what you get right here. Dude. So that was fun. Uh, what else? This bit over here, um, let me play it. So you've got the intro. And then, um, and then the, the, uh, I don't even know what to call it. There's like the, da, 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 da. um, and then the bass comes in and then it kind of changes a little bit. It goes like this. That is a mixture of, um, Right there. So this is a mixture of the forward sound effect and the backward sound effect. I, I took that melody and I reversed it and I mixed the two together. And now right here, that's that's the normal thing, except it's just it's reversed. Um, what else? So yeah, up until the chord breakdown right here, up until right here is when um, I was writing in Colorado. And after this, after the chord thing, like I basically stopped right here. After this, the rest was written on the airplane back, and I finished the song on the airplane before we landed back in Hartford. Um, yeah, there's not a lot to talk about with this song. Uh, I have a melody here that's called, quote, the uppy energetic bit with a little tiny smiley face. It's like it's like a, it's like a cute smiley face I do with text, and that's the part at the end over here. Right here. Uh, one more thing on the song, and then we'll move on. The word of the day here is side chain. If you're not a musician, side chain is when the kick drum hits. Uh, whatever else you're side chaining it to lowers in volume for the time that the kick drum is there. And that's how I got this wow, wow, wow sound effect. 
fact, let me turn off the sidechain for a second. You can hear just how disgusting it sounds. It sounds horrible. Alright, here it is. Here it is without side shots. Just... That just sounds so much better. Yeah, word of the day is sidechain and uppy energetic bit. Uh, I think that's it for this song. Rat Traps, perhaps, now called There Is No Air. All right, the next song in the EP is Lights in the Dark. This is the one that replaced uh, The Wolf. Um, this was, this is the longest song in the EP. It's like, I think it's almost five minutes. Um, this was an exercise in, for, uh, for me, this was, a, this was an exercise in progression and um, change and just, you know, overall progressing the song forward in order to keep moving and keep changing. Uh, so it is a very progressive song. It starts off with just this, this melody here. Um, and then it goes on, and I add like a bass, and then some drums, and then piano. I love this piano, by the way. Uh, piano over electronic music, when used well, sounds fantastic, and I'm really happy with how this came out. After that, it progressed into this um, this mini synth. All right, so this melody here, the, this little robot thing um, that comes after that part, that wasn't intended to be a robot thing. That was intended to just be a normal synth, but I found this preset for for a robot sounding voice, like wah, 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 wah. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. So I used that instead, it's this part. Sounds like a person singing. So yeah, that was cool. I'm happy about that. Uh, how long is this song? This is, yeah, it's four minutes and like 45 seconds or something. Four minutes, 45 seconds. Approaching five minutes. Usually I keep my songs under three and a half because, you know, normal songs are about three and a half minutes. But uh, this was just so progressive that it kind of carried out. And I don't mind that. That's okay. Sometimes my songs are shorter. Sometimes sometimes they're longer. I don't really depict or, you know, I don't I don't not release something if it's over five minutes. I don't I don't really care. I'll, I'll make a song that's 12 minutes. As long as it works and it doesn't get boring, I'll, that's fine. Um, okay, so every single artist, no matter who it is, takes their inspiration from somewhere. And uh, oftentimes it's even a single song. I, I guarantee if you study one artist for long enough, including everything that they listen to, and you listen to what they listen to, like every single day, and then you study their music very closely, you will find so many resemblances. Like, so many. It's not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Um, I've heard people say, good musicians borrow great musicians steal which is kind of fun. And uh, I do that with my music. I might I might go through and you know show you some of that. But like, you know, I, I often take my inspiration from specific songs. And I was really, one of the reasons I was so happy about the CP is because it didn't resemble other music that I listened to nearly as much as anything else that I had released. And I really liked that. Um, like the Lewis Cole thing, that was all my own ideas. All, every single one of them. Um, Midnight Doesn't Fall in Space, that was almost all my own ideas there was one song that i was kind of thinking about as i was writing a certain part but this part um in lights i wrote this and then i realized oh this sounds a lot like a dead mouse song and uh, i'll pull up the exact part that it sounds like but i wrote it first before realizing that it sounds like the song let me just play this real quick while i'm pulling up the video is that like two two minutes and 40 seconds so first of all i absolutely love how that came out i'm so happy with that um 
And the reason for that was because there were there were these controls on the synthesizer that I was using. I was using Massive. There were controls on this Massive preset that um, I don't only use presets, by the way. I, I often take a preset and then change it to be how I want it. Um, but the the controls that came with this were when you changed them, it kind of made that effect. And that's the change of two different controls at once. I don't remember what they are. But I automated them so that they uh, so that they do that thing and they kind of degrade, you know, the the sound in a way that I really really like. And um, it sounded a lot like uh, this imaginary friends song from Dead Mouse. Let me just pull it up real quick. Imaginary friends. Um. Yeah. I wrote in my notes exactly where it is. Yeah, it's right here. All right, let me let me play this bit that I wrote one more uh, one more time, and then I'll play the the dead most one. Right, and then here's imaginary friends. Such a great song. Um, like I said, I wrote that first, and then I realized that it sounds like that, and I love it. I absolutely love this part. This whole entire song I'm super happy with. Every single one of these songs I'm super happy with, but this one especially. Um, yep, again, same snare. And uh, this bit at the end. So I had a super energetic part over here. Uh, well, you know, pretty energetic. And then it went down into a sub bass. And it's just a sub bass for a few measures. Then this melody comes in. And there was specifically something that I was trying to do with this. And that is, uh... So sometimes sometimes I'll be listening to a song and I like it, and so I try to emulate, emulate a sound. Um, or like a certain technique or something. Other times I try to emulate the way that it made me feel. And what I was thinking about for this was the end of a song by Zed called um, Time, I think? Time? Yeah. Um, and the ending, it slowly builds and progresses into a monster groove, and he has a huge buildup, but then the very end of the song is like right before you feel like there should be a drop, and there's just nothing. And I really liked that, so I made it the end of my song. Um, I, uh, of course, you know, I, I didn't do the same rhythms or whatever he was doing i just wanted to do that same kind of thing where at the very end of the song you build up tons of energy and then you just drop it um it's kind of like when you're writing a story and the very end is like well what happens and then you got to be like well that's for you to decide or you know something cheesy like that all right i'm gonna go on to the last one this is um midnight does not fall in space Midnight doesn't fall in space. All right, so every single song that I write, I write with a certain philosophy, and that is the storytelling philosophy. Shush! Okay, <laughs> every single song that I write, I write with a storytelling philosophy. And by that, what I mean is... um. <laughs> Oh, life in the city. I love it. What uh, what I mean by that is that as you write a song, it should feel like a story does. Um, if you're a writer, you probably know about the hero's journey. And that is a, uh, a method for writing stories that kind of describes eight, I think it's eight different phases of, uh, of a hero and what he does. And, you know, it starts off with like the status quo and everything's normal. And then there's inc uh, an inciting incident and someone to help him and you know the final showdown you know there's all sorts of different phases i kind of try to incorporate that into my music a little bit and i think that a really good song should have the same um, it should be the same emotional roller coaster as a really good movie or something similar like that like think about when you finish when you finish a really great movie oh my god when you finish a really great movie and you're just kind of left in awe as you're thinking back through that that's what I want my songs to be like. I want my songs to be a whole entire story. Um, and I especially brought that into this song, this this Midnight song. So writing this, 
the original idea for this came from a dream. I am not kidding you. I woke up one morning. It was like 6.30 a.m. A lot of my best uh, music things come from like really early in the morning when I just wake up. Um, I don't know if that means anything. But yeah, I woke up one morning and I had this idea in my head. And I, I wrote the whole entire song in my head. Everything. The melody, the bass, the drums, the pad, the chords. Everything was all put together in my head. I'm like, there's no way I'm going back to sleep and letting this go away. So I got up. I wrote it out. And um, when I was done, I thought that it sort of kind of sounded like um, that song by M83, uh, M83, M83, uh, Midnight City. This like the M83 one hit wonder, and that's their one hit. Uh, a lot of people really like M83, M83, but that's the most popular song is Midnight Cities. And so I just called it Midnight in order to remember it. And I was at a coffee shop one time, a local coffee shop. I love writing in coffee shops, by the way. It's such a nice, productive place. And um, I was there for like four hours just drinking hot chocolate and eating sandwiches. And um, that's where I wrote most of the song. And I wrote it around that, that midnight idea that I had. And then I realized that the original idea was the worst part of the song. So I got rid of it and kept everything else. Uh, and it came out to be a really great song. But I really kind of wish that I kept the original idea because like, how often do you get a great musical um, opening just like from a dream or something? So I really wish I could. Because now it's heck if I remember it. I definitely don't. Oh, shoot. I hit my mic. Um, so yeah, this song, more tempo changes than any any other song that I've written. And the big part of this song is this part right here. Um, I made a giant wall of sound and uh, it features my voice. So let me, let me just play this real quick. I've always loved wall of sound style music. Um, where there's, there's just no empty sonic space, everything is filled. And that's really kind of what I was trying to go for with this. Um, this is made up of like seven different synths and my voice. And then it goes into the hard part. I've always kind of liked, I've always wanted to have my voice in the songs. I've always, I've always wanted to sing a little bit, but truth be told, I'm really self-conscious about my own voice. I don't know why. I don't sing in front of people like almost ever. And if I do, I'm not trying because if they say you suck, I'm like, I know I'm not trying. But um, I want to ease myself into being comfortable with my own voice on my own music, on my own recordings. And this is the first step. This is the first time that my voice has ever been featured um, in one of my songs. And the next step is to kind of do like a son holo style thing where it's very heavily processed. Um, after that, then I might have like my actual just normal raw voice. Um, but yeah, this is the first step. Let me just play this on, on its own. As I was mixing this, um, I was listening to this voice part on my own. I was like, wow, this is, this is really horrible. I'm not, I'm not playing this on Jupiter 4. And then I realized maybe that's a problem. So I mixed it way better than it already was. And now it sounds okay. This is my voice on its own. This is 14 different recordings of my voice. So that, that's interesting. So this took a stupid amount of time. This was so frustrating to do. And it's not the only time I've done this. This was the first time that I did something like this, but it's not, it's not the only time. Um, 
this was really frustrating to do. I tried this so many times and it just kept on sounding bad and I kept on having to redo it and I kept messing up. And then the other problem was if you have a chorus, one of the things you like an actual chorus, one of the things you could do is called stagger breathing. Uh, also works in like uh, a concert band. And that is where if you have 15 dudes sing the exact same thing and one of them runs out of breath and stops singing for just a second, no one's going to notice because you got 14 other guys covering you up. So I tried to do that. I, I was trying to stagger breathe with myself and I even timed exactly when I should breathe, but you could still hear it. So what I actually did is I went through and I cut out the point of, uh, I, I cut out the breath uh, on each of the tracks and replaced it with me actually singing. So if you notice, if you go back and listen to that, there's no breath. Uh, you might even hear points where it was cut, but over the rest of the song, you don't hear it at all. Um, in the future, I definitely want to um, go more with this. Some of the inspiration that I had was uh, Woods by Bon Iver. You should listen to that. It's a really great, I guess you could say acapella. Uh, a lot of autotune, a lot of reverb, and things like that. And uh, there were a few other places that I took inspiration for that from. But yeah, I decided to do it, and it's finally done. And I'm not re-recording it. Definitely not. And there is some processing in that as well. Um, just some EQ and compression. There's a lot of compression, actually. All right, so moving on in the song. This is the part that I always called the hard part. Because uh, it's it's got some serious drum and bass going on here. Uh, let me just play a little bit of this in case you haven't heard the song. It's so heavy and it's so angry. I just love it. And it's got this thing too. So going back to the storytelling aspect of this, you kind of see what's going on here. So it starts off and it just get, it just gets right into the action. And this is like the status quo, you could say, of the hero's journey. This is when everything is normal and it's just kind of setting the scene for how it's supposed to be done. And then something changes slightly. Uh, I've got that extra melody. And then this whole build up for like, this is like pre-climax, I guess this big huge giant wall of sound and then it goes into the um into the hard part i guess you could say this is the actual climax uh everything is aggressive everything is really fight fighting you know um and as it progresses you got back into like bringing things back uh, from the beginning uh the end of the hero's journey is status quo again but it's it's different now it's like it'll, it'll never be the same or whatever because of because of the the journey and the uh, the story that's happened and that's what this is is that i'm bringing back the same instrumentation but it's got some drum and bass in there as well and then i'm also bringing it back to the wall of sound in a way because i'm using um the organ again and uh and things but it's it's not as huge of course it's like a very relaxed version and then the very ending i had a tempo change it's all slowing down got some bells in there and um it's just it, it, this is like the reflective point where you kind of look back on on the story and everything you've been through and then every good story has to end with like the, this is the happy ending it's like oh the nice resolved major chords i think that's a major chord probably um yeah storytelling aspect very important uh yeah so, I don't remember which one, but so the, the, those are all the um, songs in the EP. And when whenever I release an EP or I'm, I might release an album in the future, I always take into account the order that the songs are put in there. Because just like you have the storytelling aspect of the song, you got to have the storytelling aspect of the EP. The whole entire thing is a story. So that's why I wanted to have Storm Clouds be at the beginning because it's got a really great beginning. So it's not only the beginning of the song, it's the beginning of the whole collection. 
uh, and it also has a, uh, an ending that goes into you know the rest of it. This one kind of has a beginning. Th this song kind of has a beginning that's like almost like a continuation. There's not a lot of uh, exposition. It's just some rising white noise and uh, some drums to bring it in. Not a lot of exposition. So I wanted to have this as the end because the beginning, it, it, this is like the beginning of the end, so it almost is a continuation. And then just this beautiful, beautiful major chord at the very end just makes such a nice resolve to the whole entire thing. Also, I like to have my best songs at the beginning and the end um, because the beginning and the end are almost the most important part of the story. Uh, cause if you think the beginning of a book is the part that makes you want to read it and the end of the book is, is how you'll remember it for all of the time after you finish reading. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's mostly everything on the EP. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day and I hope you enjoy the CP that I wrote. I spent a lot of time on it and, um, yeah, I, I just hope you enjoy it. Be sure to show some love. Uh, in, the, in the coming episodes, I'm going to have John Sojeski here talking about house music and metal and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it'll be lots of fun. Jupiter 4, stay tuned, keep listening, and uh, have a wonderful evening.